everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be experimenting painting a horse's eye using watercolors so as you know i do a lot of my work with colored pencils or graphite and charcoal so i thought i would have a go experimenting a bit more with watercolors so i'm just attempting to paint this horse's eye so I'm going to talk you through how I did this, but because I was experimenting, there's a lot of things that I would change about this piece if I was to redo it again, and I'll talk you through some of them as well. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just blocking in all the darkest shadows using some of the black watercolour. And so with the horse's pupil, it's actually rectangular. It's not circular, which I was completely unaware of. I didn't know it was rectangular until I looked at all the reference photos. So it's important with animals' eyes that you really look at the different shapes because they're not just the same as the humans. So I'm using a water brush pen. And what I love about this is that you can get really good gradations of the different colors. So for example, with the black, I like to use the thickest black straight on the darkest parts. And then I use a bit of the water on the bristles to help blend that out and get lighter tones of the black. And so it's really, really good to softly transition into different areas and to get different values of the same color. So one thing that I would change is the direction in which I used the brush as I was marking down these initial layers. So my main problem that I had with this eye when I did it was actually the skin by the inner corner of the eye. And you'll see later on when I go in with the white gouache that I'd love to change how I did that and I'll talk you through why later on. So I do like how I did the actual iris in this painting. I think the iris came out very realistic and I was really happy with it. But I'd like to work more on the fur around the eye the next time I do it. So you don't have to use a water brush pen, you can use a paintbrush, but I just really like using these to get the little fur strokes and like I said before to get different gradations of the same kind of colour. You could use a little paintbrush or a larger paintbrush if you're trying to fill a larger area. So when I need the areas really, really dark, I just saturate my end of that water brush a lot more with the paint. I use a lot less water and I don't squeeze the brush pen as hard because that means it would deposit lots of water if you were to squeeze it a bit harder. And then this would give you a much thicker uh, black colour. So for the really, really light tones, I just use quite a lot of water with the paint. And so I did have a reference photo and I just looked at that reference photo and just picked out the darkest portions. I left the highlighted areas and the mid-tone areas quite white or just with a light wash of that grey kind of colour. But mainly I left the highlighted areas completely white and this shows later on where the shadows are and the highlights. So now I've blocked in the basic foundational structure of the eye. I'm going in with the burnt sienna colours and this is a nice brown orangey kind of colour. And I'm just glazing that over the whole of the iris and you can see that before because we blocked in where the shadows and the highlighted areas when we glaze this color over the top it automatically gives us that range of shadows and highlights anyway because it will look slightly darker over the top of the black color but then it will just be a light kind of wash of brown over the area where we didn't apply any paint so that's why i like to apply black to all of the shadows first because the watercolours are really quite translucent, they're not completely opaque, so they won't just cover the whole area again. You'll still see the layers showing through from underneath. I also mix in some of those darker brown colours to add more tones. I don't like just using one or two different colours, I like to mix quite a few different colours in there to give it a bit more variety. And if you look at the reference photos of eyes, you'll see that there's quite a lot of different hues and different colours in there. So now I'm working on the fur on the outside of the eye and to do this I think I was using 
like the yellow ochre color or something like that. So quite a yellowish brown light kind of color and I just use this with a flat water brush instead of just the normal water brush and I use that to just block in where the fur is going to be. I didn't do any kind of fur strokes yet, I'll do that later on. I was just blocking in the general tone so we have a base layer to work on. And now I'm working back on the iris. I added a bit of blue on those highlighted areas because in the reference photo on the highlighted areas there was the sky reflecting which was obviously had a bit of blue in it. So I just added a tint of blue to help with the realistic look. I'm adding a bit more black and some thicker dark brown to darken up the shadowed areas and I'm just layering these different colours. One tip that I do have is that if you're starting to find that your paint is kind of pulling off all the other paint underneath and it's not really sticking anymore, you might have to wait for the layers to dry before you go and apply another layer, otherwise the paint will just start to move around and it won't really layer on top of each other anymore. So definitely wait for your paint to dry in between layers and then build it, build it up in different layers rather than just trying to do it all in one go. So I'm just building up those layers in that iris. And I'm also adding some darker shading now around the fur around the eye as well. So as you can see, I haven't done all the little eyelashes yet. I like to leave them uh, for a bit later because I've got a lot of stuff that I need to do underneath the eyelashes. So if I put the eyelashes in first, then I'll have to try and work around them all to do all the fur in between. So it's best to leave those kind of details uh, for last and I like to do them last on a human's eye as well. I just find it easier to do So now I'm adding some slightly browner tones and I'm starting to build up that fur around the eye so I'm using little brush marks and This works well if you use that flat brush pen and you kind of Dab off all of the water so that the bristles separate a bit from each other and this helps get that fur look and it makes little tiny lines on the fur and it will just make a really nice fur texture and so I'm using different tones to help get some variation into that fur as you'll see later on you can layer some dark browns or even a bit of black in certain areas if you want to it all depends on the reference photo that you're working from so now I'm also Deepening up that crease just above the eye by using a mixture of the browns and the blacks. Try not to use black on its own, otherwise it might look a bit flat, unless in the reference photo it was just a really, really black colour. So for example, in the fur, it was just a really dark shade of brown, so I used a bit of black and some dark brown in conjunction with each other to get that really dark brown tone. You can also use the tissue on wet paint to lighten up that area as well, which I really, really like to do. So if you found that you've gone a bit too dark, then you need to go, or if you just made a mistake and the paint is still wet, then you can use a bit of tissue and this will help lighten up that area. Or if it's really wet, it will just remove that layer altogether. So now I'm moving on to painting in the eyelashes. And because I want them to be really opaque and to really stand out, I use really thick a mixture of that black paint and I'm using a little tiny detailed paintbrush to block these in so that they're really crisp and really sharp and they're just really fine detailed. And I was looking really closely at the reference photo here just to make sure that I'm doing the eyelashes in the direction that they should be going. It's really important when you're doing things like individual hairs like the eyelashes or if you're doing a human's eye, something like the eyebrows, it's really important that you look at the direction that those individual hairs or eyelashes are going in so that you can replicate this in your painting. Otherwise, if they're going in a different, unnatural direction, then it might not look as realistic and it just might look like there's something a bit off about your painting. So really look at the direction that the eyelashes are going in. So now I'm just building up some individual little details 
I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm just trying to make it a bit closer to the reference photo. And I'm just using that black colour. I'm going back in with the water brush and I'm glazing some of that black colour over those areas that I left a bit more highlighted. So I'm just adding in some of the mid-tone colours. And I'm just perfecting the final details with the watercolours before I go in with the white gouache and add some highlights. Okay, so now I'm working on the reflection inside the iris and one thing that you'll notice about reflections is sometimes you'll see the eyelashes actually being reflected into the iris and these details are things that are really subtle but it will really help to make your drawing look realistic if you add these little details. So adding the eyelashes reflecting in the iris is something that will really make your drawing look a lot more realistic even though it's just a small little detail it's definitely look, it's definitely worth looking closely at those reference photos to help get in all those little subtle details okay so now i'm moving on to using the white gouache and the gouache that i used is the Windsor and Newton designers gouache in i think it's permanent white and i'm just using this to add in some highlights and I liked how I did the highlights inside the iris, so I added that white paint to um, bits of the iris to lighten it up and also in that main reflection to really make it look white and bright and make it pop. But the thing that I didn't like that I did was the first bit of white that I did on the inner corner of the eye. So on that skin, just on the inner corner. And what I don't like about it is it just looks like a bit of a blob. It looks a bit of a mess. There's no real definition. And I definitely think that I should have looked more about the direction that those little white highlights should have been going in. I think I just did a bit too much straight away and I didn't build it up slowly. And if I did this again, definitely next time, I would, to pay more attention to the reference photo, I think I just went straight in without really thinking and then it just made a bit of a mess. But I definitely liked how I did the paint inside the iris and the little bits of shine on the waterline and stuff like that. But it's just mainly on the fur that I think I could have spent a bit more time and I just went in and rushed it a bit. I also think I did some of the white highlights on the upper eyelid a bit too harsh and that Next time I should glaze some colours over the top to help make it not look so harsh or I should dilute the white paint a bit just to make it more of a subtle little hairs rather than being just bright white. So that's something that I'll definitely next time focus on doing is focus on doing the fur a bit more realistic and not making it just loads of highlighted white gouache everywhere. I don't think that it looks really bad. I don't think it looks awful I still think it looks quite realistic it's just these are things that I'd like to change next time if I was to do the painting again because I think it's nice to set yourself goals and to look at things that you want to improve on so that you can just get better with your skills so yeah I'm just using the little detailed paintbrush to add some little hairs and then I go back in with the black to define some of the areas where it got a bit too white and you lost the structure a bit. But yeah, that's basically it for today's little study or tutorial or however you want to see it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future tutorials. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!